Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to your favorite girl on the internet. That's me, by the way. If you are new here, my name is Jasmine Rosette and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about budgeting 101. Now this is gonna be the first video in my new adulting 101 series that I have here on my channel. So I'm very, very excited to kind of get this kick started and on a roll. So before we get into today's video, I just wanna give a little disclaimer or maybe a big disclaimer. I am not an expert. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not saying that all these suggestions on how to budget are the end all be all. Please take this with a grain of salt. These are just things that have worked for me and for some of the people that I know in my life that I've shared these tips with. So yeah, if you want to partake in some of these, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. This is not mandatory. I'm not saying that you have to do this. These are all just suggestions. So just remember that. But before we get into how to budget, I would ask that you subscribe so you can keep up with your favorite girl on the internet. That's me. And give this video a thumbs up if you like any part of this video. Leave a comment, say hi, I say hi back. And yeah, let's get into how to budget 101. First thing that I'm going to recommend, and if you see me looking down, I'm, I have notes on my phone. Um, I made like a Google Doc on exactly all the things that I kind of want to talk about in today's video because I don't want to forget anything, but yeah. The first thing is, what is your income? You need to kind of figure out how much do you make each month? Now, if you don't know, I would recommend looking at your bank statements. If you don't know how to access your bank statements, um, I would suggest making sure that you bring a photo ID and know your address that is on your account and going to your bank. You can go to them in person and be like, hey, like I just wanna have access to my bank statement so I can see like what my expenses are each month and what I'm making each month. You could also go to your employer and get your pay statements or your pay slips to kind of see like what your income is each month. But yeah, I would recommend kind of if you know that they fluctuate each month, gathering the last three months worth of pay so that you have an average of what you're making. Add them up together, divide them by three, and then you'll have the average of what you make per month. The second thing is to kind of determine what your expenses are. So that means what you are spending your money on. So that could be food, entertainment, shelter, water, vacation, insurance it could be a lot of things but you need to kind of figure out what your expenses are what you're spending your money on the third thing you need to do is subtract your income from your expenses so you need to kind of figure out what you're making minus what you're spending it should determine whether you're over budget or under budget it should just mean if you are overspending or if you have money left over are making ends meet by hitting a zero completely each month so everything that you make is also being spent on so like if you make fifteen hundred dollars you're also spending fifteen hundred dollars but if you're if you're making fifteen hundred dollars and you're spending sixteen hundred dollars that means you're over budget and another scenario could be that you're making fifteen hundred dollars but you're spending only thirteen hundred dollars that means that you have two hundred dollars left over that could go to savings or paying off debt or you could simply spend it fourth thing is you need to figure out what your debt is as well if you have any savings goals. So if you have student loan debt, a car debt, you know, mortgage, that's part of debt as well. Um, you need to kind of figure out what those are, as well as if you have any savings goals. So if you're saving towards buying a house, saving towards buying a Louis Vuitton bag or a vacation, you need to figure out what your goals are and all of these are gonna be super relative to each individual. Not everyone's gonna have the same savings goal, not everyone is also gonna have the same debt. Cause some people have student debt and some people don't. And some people have credit card debt and some people don't and so on. The fifth thing that you need to do, which is the final thing that you need to do, is to track how you are doing. So there's many ways that you can do this. You can do it via Excel spreadsheets. Google has um, spreadsheets that you can use and kind of create your own spreadsheet of a budget of what your income is versus what your expenses are and your savings goal slash what your debt is and kind of figuring all that out. Um, another tool that you can use is the Numbers app. So if you have an iPhone, if you have a Mac computer or an iPad, it should be on your device, but it's a free app and it has like a 
monthly budgeting uh, spreadsheet that you can use. So you can kind of input and manipulate the spreadsheet to kind of fit and cater to your needs. So yeah, that's five ways on how you can budget. So I'm just gonna go over them one more time. The first thing is, what is your income? Number two are, what are your expenses? Three, you need to subtract your income from your expenses. Four, figure out what your debt slash savings goals are. And five, you need to track how you're doing. So it's pretty easy, it's pretty simple on how to budget. It's not that hard and it's not daunting. So don't be afraid of it. It's just taking the time, effort, and energy to kind of put in and kind of figure out where, what it is that you're spending, where your money's going, and how you want to impact your future with your financial goals. Now that we know how to budget, here are a few things. Now, remember, these are just suggestions. They're not mandatory. You don't have to do them. These are just suggestions. So you need to do what feels right for you. Because remember, it's all relative, it is personal, it is specifically catering to your specific needs. So if none of these fit or align with what you're trying to do, you don't have to do them. But just remember, these are just suggestions, these are not mandatory, you don't have to do them. The first thing I recommend is that you budget for the month ahead. So say that you're at the end of February, or let's say March, we're at the end of March right? It's the fourth week of March. April is going to be upon us. We want to kind of set up a budget for the month of April. We don't want to do a budget for March at the end of March. We want to set up a budget, kind of like a guideline of what we're going to be spending our money on, what our money is going to be going towards for the month of April so we can kind of plan ahead. So budgeting is really all just about planning ahead looking into the future and kind of seeing where money is going. Yeah, it's it's kind of like a future goal of how you want to set up your month for success and what that looks to you. If you can, I would recommend doing auto pay, setting up auto pay. Now there's certain things that you can't set up auto pay for and there's certain things that you can, but if you can make automatic withdrawals for a lot of your bills, I would suggest doing that. That way you don't have any late fees. Do not compare yourself to others. Everyone's situation is gonna be different. And the best thing that you can do is to just focus on yourself and focus on your goals and what you need to accomplish with your budget. So you don't need to know what's going on with your neighbors over there or your friends over here or your family over there. You just need to focus on you and what you're doing and what you're trying to accomplish. If you were wanting to get out of debt, I would say try setting a side of money each month that can help you pay off your debt faster. So if you have a student loan, if you have credit card debt, it could be helpful once you kind of figure out um, you know your budget if you have money left over or if you don't have money left over you can kind of figure out you know what in your budget needs to kind of go first before doing this um, so that you can start being able to pay off your debt so say if you have credit card debt and it is like around a thousand dollars set aside money each month to pay off that debt sooner it doesn't mean that you need to have a thousand dollars right off the bat it just means that maybe fifty dollars per month for a couple months could be what you need to do to pay off that debt determine your needs versus your wants so your needs are things that you absolutely need and are essential to your life so food shelter water basic clothing stuff like that is absolutely essential things that are wants that are not going to necessarily add to your life but they are going to take away from your bank account could be like buying a jacuzzi like you don't need it but you want it. I'm not saying that your wants or desires that you have are bad. I'm just saying that realistically, it might not be the best financial decision if you don't have the money to buy a jacuzzi to buy a jacuzzi. If you know that you know you need to pay off certain debts or you need to meet your certain savings goals, maybe meet those first and then save up to buying for a jacuzzi so that you're not being broke that month. The goal with budgeting is to allow you to not always hit zero or go into the negative with your bank account. The goal with budgeting is to allow yourself to be able to have a savings account and to build up your savings as well 
as for you to not be broke constantly. No one likes being broke. No one likes to not have money. So that is the goal with budgeting, essentially. At least it is for me, is to just not be broke, not to have no, like any money, but to have money left over in case I need to pay for things or, um, you know, if I want to save for a trip or save to go to a really nice restaurant, I can be able to afford to do that. And this one is also like very, very important as well. Um, besides determining your needs versus your wants, I would say rewarding yourself. You need to be able to reward yourself. So if you set yourself some goals or say a goal for you could be sticking to your budget for three months. Once you've stuck to your budget for three months, you might have a goal of going to a restaurant or going to a spa or treating yourself. Those are really, really great to have a goal. So it's something that you can look forward to. So it doesn't make budgeting and trying to get out of debt or trying to obtain um, financial freedom be like, it doesn't make it look so daunting. So I feel like having, giving yourself a goal and rewarding yourself once you've achieved your goal could be very, very helpful. So basically how you reward yourself is up to you, but it should be something that you can afford to pay out of pocket and not something that is going to put you further into debt. That's not the purpose of rewarding yourself or treat yourself. It is to basically be able to afford the reward out of pocket. So something that you can actually pay for and not go into further debt for. That is what the reward should be. So if you want to reward yourself Say like for three months, you didn't eat out, you saved a bunch of money. You could even save like, you know, $500. You save that money from eating out and, and instead you put that towards your groceries and you have money left over, maybe treating yourself to a really nice dinner or going on a date that is a little bit more luxe than normal, but it's money that you still have set aside, saved up for that. So you also want to kind of save for those rewards or if it's, you know, an item of clothing that you want or a jacuzzi, you can reward yourself for meeting your goals that you've, you know, have. So if you've met a certain savings goal, you wanted to save $500 by the end of the summer and you met it, you could reward yourself or treat yourself to, you know, whatever that looks like for you. But rewarding yourself is key. And the final thing is to have grace for yourself. No one is perfect and no one is expecting you to be perfect. I'm not expecting you to be perfect. I hope you are not putting yourself with that expectation that you have to be perfect to meet your budgeting goals or to be the best at budgeting. That is not it at all. Having a budget is basically just having a guideline on where your money is and where it's going and how how it's actually panning out. So have grace for yourself. No one is perfect at budgeting. Even the people who make the most money in the world, they are not perfect at budgeting. And it's truly all about just putting your best foot forward. So please keep that in mind. Please remember that. It's just about putting your best foot forward and it's about getting financial freedom and not being in debt, which I feel like for me is the most important thing, that might not be it for you. It could just be making sure that you're not overspending each month um, and not being broke. You need to figure out what your why is when you're budgeting and so that it can help you meet your goals and help you stick with your budget. And it's all a guideline. Everyone's way and why of doing budgeting is different. For me, I don't wanna be in debt. I don't think it's a great thing to continuously have money that you pay for, you know, pay towards this thing each month when I know I can pay it off faster. And then going forward, once it's paid off, have that money to spend however I want to going forward. For some people, they're okay with doing that for the duration of what that debt commitment is and maybe just making it to where they're not going broke each month which both are good. No, not one is not, you know, better than the other. They're both really good because it's all about, as I said, putting your best foot forward. So that's it. That is how to budget 101. Hope this was helpful. If it was, please do leave me a comment down below. Um, I would love, love, love to know. If you like any part of this video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can keep up with me and the things that I'm doing on here on the internet. And follow me on Instagram. I do have an Instagram page. It is at Jasmine Rosette. 
And yeah, subscribe, like, comment, do all that stuff. Don't forget to stay kind, stay true, and stay laughing. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.